Thank you. So welcome. I know it's like 530. You've had a long day. You've heard a lot of keynotes. So we're going to make this quick, concise, give you what the low, you know, quick rundown. And hopefully you guys can go, you know, have some fun dinners or enjoy some other talks and boots. So you've seen a lot this week. Um, last two days about plan, develop, you know, operating, um, getting your app ready, you know, building it. But today we're going to mostly focus on how you operate in production. Um, in AI Foundry, we've, power, we've also partnered with Azure Monitor to deliver this experience. And that's how you're going to continuously improve your app agents in production. I'm excited to announce that we are now introducing Foundry Observability. This is how you can continuously improve and monitor your agents. Um, and that's what we're going to walk through in our demo today. So without further ado, let's just get right into this demo. Today, we are both developers at Contosa Outdoors, building a support agent to help our customers learn about different products we offer and policies about returns and sales, et cetera. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump into VS Code. Uh, actually, let me just show you what my agents look like. So I already have an agent here. Um, and before I get that ready to, you know, deploy to production, there's a few things I want to make sure I have set up to really observe and monitor this agent production. For starters, I want to make sure I've set up tracing. And so I've already done that here. I'm actually using application insights. Um, and that is actually connected to my project client. You might've seen this in other sessions, but I've already created, um, an AI Foundry project client here. And through that, I actually can connect uh, to application insights. Then I configure Azure Monitor, which starts the instrumentation, collecting the traces I need. I use the tracer, and I'm calling and I'm calling that here. After that, I've called that same agent you saw earlier. I'm creating the thread. I'm cleaning the message. I'm streaming the responses. And the next most important thing that we are I'm excited to talk about is. I'm going to continuously evaluate my agent in production. So what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the run ID, I'm grabbing the thread ID of the conversation, and I'm listing all the evaluators I care about to continuously evaluate my application. Specifically, there's two evaluators I want to dive into a little deeper is the evaluators we built specifically to evaluate, uh, to measure agent quality, task adherence, and intent resolution. Task adherence is important because I want to make sure that this agent, this support agent, is doing the task I tell it to do. For example, like it's a support agent. It should answer queries uh, that customers have about our products. Now, it's great if it can answer something random like, give me the recipe for pizza, but that's probably not what I want it to be doing the whole time. I also care about intent resolution because I care about like whether the agent's answering the query that the customer has. So if it asks something like, hey, like what's the return policy? It tells me exactly what that is. So I've already, and I also have added safety and risk evaluators as well. I also can pass in a sampling configuration. Right now I have 100%. I want everything to be evaluated that comes in. But I can also set like 50%, 20%, depending on like what sample size I'd like to pass in. I have redaction set to false just because reasonings, uh, I would like actually the reasoning and explanations to tell me why certain evaluators are scored the way they are. Uh, you may, by default, this is set to true because sometimes if you might have an agent that's more sensitive and the reasoning scores may include that information. So by default, it's set to true. But if you would like the reasoning uh, explanations, set this to false. And again, I have the application insights connection string. Now I can just actually test and show you guys. I can ask it a question about, you know, the track ready hiking boots are waterproof. And now just, you know, I've already deployed this agent to production. I've already started monitoring for the past week now. Um, and I'm going to actually go into Azure AI Foundry into my project and monitor this. So I can already see um, this is connected to that same application insights resource to this project. And I see the total tokens. I see the inferencing calls. I start to see the average of my evaluation metrics for this past week. I see that my tokens have spiked up recently um, as I was using some agents that had some tool calling uh, I added to. And then I also see my quality average score that we were just talking about. So I see that both the safety and quality evaluators. 
what's really interesting here is, you know, about a week ago on the 16th, I had this really poor performance happening. You know, it looks good now, but like something was happening here. And I'm kind of curious, like what that was. And to figure that out, I actually just need to go to tracing. So what I've done in tracing is I've actually just started to filter um, into my metrics. And from there, I can easily find the traces where my metrics are uh, below three. So here I can see I was asking about the Katosa Outdoors return policy. And I got a response that was not exactly like being very specific. It's kind of saying like it could be 30 days, which may not be what I'm actually looking for. Um, and I can actually deep dive and learn more about these metrics and see that task adherence was one, internal resolution was two, and it tells me why this response was not helpful. And it's because, you know, as the user, I was asking a return policy, but it wasn't also doing its job as a support agent. And even intent resolution talks about the same thing that's unhelpful and lacks clarity. So you saw that the curve was going upwards and to show you how we did that and how we tested that, I'm gonna pass it over to Han to tell us how we can set up CI, uh, CI workflows to evaluate our agent. Okay. Um, how to spam it? Why? Okay. Thanks, Ami. So Ami told me that some of the matrix is now actually not performing well. So I created a few new agents that like one ends with new candidate, one that I rewrite the prompt. The other one that ends with, with Bing search, I actually add some instructions on how to add the Bing search to that to review the, the agent. So I want to test these two new agents, whether they are performing better than the current one. So I want to run some offline evaluation. And given my repo is all in Azure DevOps, I really want to integrate this offline evaluation with my pipeline. So the first thing I do is to I go to the Azure DevOps uh, Marketplace. So here we have a new extension called AI Agent Evaluation. You can actually integrate your, your evaluation uh, into your pipeline. So after I install it, I actually go to my own repo. And uh, here you can see I can actually specify this extension in my workflow file. So to make sure it works, uh, it actually requires four inputs. The first one is the Azure AI project endpoint, which connects your AI project to your repo. So you can easily get it from the AI Foundry overview page, so which is here. The second one is the deployment name, which actually refers to the model that your evaluation uh, you will, will judge on. So here uh, you can just pick up whatever model that you deployed in AI Foundry. So here I just pick up the GPD-40, the third one is the agent ID. So remember, I created a few ones that uh, in the agent page. So for each agent, uh, you will find an agent ID attached to it. So here. And uh, in your workflow file that you can specify one or as many as agents you want so that we will do an evaluation one against these agents uh, in your evaluation one. So by default, we'll consider the first one as your baseline agent, and the rest of them will do a comparison against the first one. The last one is the data pass. It actually includes a data source uh, that you should prepare beforehand. So it includes the set of the evaluators that you want to test in your evaluation one, and also a set of queries that you want to test on. So here I actually provide around like 15 queries about the um, outdoor questions. Okay, now everything is set, and uh, whenever you commit a change or create a PR, you can just set it up, and it will just automatically <laughs> trigger uh, evaluation one for it. So I'm going to the pipelines here, I'll trigger a manual run for it to show how it works. So make sure that select the branch that was your correct setup and uh, trigger run for it. The job will soon uh, start to queue and soon start to run. So it usually takes about like 10 to 15 minutes for the processing, depending on uh, the data set volume and the number of agents you want to evaluate. 
So I'll, to same time, I'll just show some results that I just run it earlier. So here, once the job is done, uh, you will see a new tab called AI agent evaluation here. So this result includes two sections. The first section actually includes a summary of the agents you actually test. You can see the agent name here. We also provide the agent ID link that when you click on it, it will direct you to the agent page in AI Foundry. We also provide you the evaluation result for each agent here. So, and one thing to note is that if you want to see some individual result on each role or each query, um, this is the right place. So just give them one second to load. Okay. So you can see uh, that each result is shown like in Foundry and the extension summary will only have like a summary of the overall scores. So this will be easier for you to debug or just to iterate your prompt. Okay. Go back to the result. On the second section, it actually includes a set of metrics that in your evaluation run. So the first section is the operational metrics. And this is actually provided, we provide as a out of box matrix. So, so you don't need to really set it up. We will automatically generate for you for your each evaluation run. So including latency and token counts, you can consider them as some guard rule metrics when you evaluate your agent. The second part is the quality and safety matrix, uh, which you specify in your data set that it shows you, okay, whether the new agent is performing better or not. So here, the other thing to notice is that we actually introduce statistic analysis into this. And we also provide some color code, which give you like much easier, uh, sense on how to, uh, judge it. So for example, for the light green, it means that it's, it has a like marginally statistic significant movement and the dark green means it has a highly statistic movement. So it, you can just easily to identify which one actually has a better performance. Okay. So after rounds of iteration and evaluation runs, you might find, okay, this agent is more promising, uh, than you, you want to use it in production and, uh, the next step is you can deploy that interaction and continue to monitor the performance. And I will hand over back to Ami to show how we want to proceed once you deploy that production. Okay, so like you saw this earlier. Now, Han, we like to deploy that you know new candidate agent of being search. And so that's what we're seeing here is like we had that problem, that first agent wasn't performing as great. We saw as soon as we deploy that new agent, it's going back up. You see internal resolution, relevance. Task carriers, all the evaluators are shooting up. We do see some fluctuations. So maybe we want to start to look, investigate a little bit, to see, make sure those scores stay above 4.5. So there is some room we can improve a little bit more, but it's performing much better than initially was. We also see that like some of the safety scores were like wobbling a bit, but now they've sort of, at least today, they've been zero, which is good. We want to make sure, you know, we're secure. Um, and with that, like as our scores have improved, we've also seen traffic and token consumption increase. So with that, like also what you can do with these views, as I mentioned very beginning, we worked with Azure Monitor is you can also view this in Azure Monitor Application Insights. You can take that same view. This will open you up into that save in Application Insights. You can edit, save, and then share with your team as you need to. You can also take queries directly from this view, open them up using Custo Query, and then set Azure alerts. So we've made it very easy for you to integrate with the rest of the Azure ecosystem so you can continue to monitor and observe your application production. Um, with that, we're nearing the end of our time. It's a very quick <laughs> demo, but I do want to plug that some of the stuff with you know GitHub, we talked about ADO today. There's GitHub Actions as well for CICD. There's also the Azure Alerts flow that all will be shown in tomorrow's breakout session, the AI and agent observability, in Azure AI Foundry and Azure Monitor. We also have other related great sessions throughout this week or I recorded that already existed. So we really encourage you to stop by. Also go to our booth, Azure AI Foundry Observability over there. Um, and thank you all. Thank you.